Okay, today I want to show you the inner workings of a microscope and to do so I have this kind of interesting looking microscope and it's interesting because one thing that we usually associate with microscopes is missing and that is eyepieces. So this system is in a way torn down to its bare essentials. There's just an objective lens and we'll get to that soon and then an image is formed on the camera here and that is then displayed only on the computer. Now other than that it has all of the components that a microscope needs which is basically an objective lens and a tube lens and some sources of illumination light and I will now take you to uh, through where these things are and how they work. But then to do so, we first need to, uh, before taking apart the microscope, we first need to convince ourselves that it actually works and that we can use it as a real scope. So, um, first of all, we can see on the screen that there is a live image. There we go. And I can then use the joystick here to actually move the stage and it moves the sample. So we have a motorized stage, an XY stage here. On top of that, there's also a motor here that moves the objective. And that is then controlled with this wheel here. And that can go up and down. And that will change the focus of the sample of the screen because it moves the objective with respect to the sample. Then this part here is the condenser uh, part of the microscope. So we uh, can set up Keuler illumination just as you've learned before. There's a uh, light source here which is an LED and we'll get to that in a moment. There's then a field diaphragm here and when we close that we see that our, uh, the light on the sample gets a lot dimmer. And there's the condenser aperture down here. We can focus the condenser. And so using all of these, we can set up Kohler illumination. So we'll close down the field diaphragm. We'll find the point where the field diaphragm is focused onto the sample, which is right here. And then there's some controls here with which we can move this condenser in this direction and in this direction. So there's here we can move this one and we see that the field diaphragm is moving. And we also see that it's kind of moving in unexpected ways occasionally. And this way we can center that and then open it slightly so that it covers the full field of view. And so here we would have set up curly illumination. Now, it is interesting to see how this whole thing works and the nice thing is that we can take it apart. So the first thing I'll do is to disconnect the light source here by pulling out the power supply. We can then take this whole uh, condenser and take it off the microscope. There's the field diaphragm, the condenser diaphragm. There is a slider here in between the condenser diaphragm and the actual condenser lens. And this slider has a neutral density filter and defilter, an open position and another uh, aperture. Put that back in. So when we look at the light coming out of the condenser, you can see kind of this cone of light coming out. So when you now close down the field diaphragm, you will notice that that cone of light is still there, but that the center point is much smaller than it was before. So we closed that down in the uh, point of view. Whereas when you close down the condenser diaphragm, we kind of get this small um, cone of light 
So the angles with which we illuminate are now much, much shallower. Okay. So now we'll take off the light source itself. And so the first thing we see here now is that the way all the connections are made in this microscope. So there's this ring here. I can also loosen three set screws on the other side. So that, so you see that, so this ring is what holds everything together. So it fits in the tube nicely and then three set screws hold it firmly in place and make sure that all the components are of the same um, optical path. Okay, so we took out here the light source, the LED, with the field diaphragm, and you can now see that diaphragm itself. So close it and open it. And behind it, you can also see the reflections of the collector lens. So that, col so that collector lens actually collects the image of the LED and then projects that image roughly at the condenser aperture. And so we can actually see that by lighting the LED again. And you can now see that there's a focus roughly at this dense distance, so that is roughly where that condenser aperture sits. Now, we can take this even further apart. And so, by unscrewing these two screws, we take out the top part and you see that this light source is literally a little circuit board with a USB connector on the side for power and then the LED sitting right there. Okay. So that was the transmitted light. So this microscope is not only equipped for transmitted light microscopy, but also for fluorescence. And to demonstrate that, I'll put on another sample, something that has some uh, fluorescent objects. And we will now also need to connect the fluorescent epi light source, which is in the back here. So I'll power that up. You may be able to see blue light coming up now. I will um, move the microscope, so the stage, so that we are close to the sample. I now also need to cover up the, um, uh, the sample so that we don't get overhead light coming through anymore. And we will need to have a slightly higher exposure time. And then we start to see something on the screen. And I'll now try to focus. And there we see nicely fluorescent cells. So here we have a fluorescent microscope. So how does that work? And what are the uh, basic parts of it? Well, so we have an exactly the same um, LED uh, illuminator that is now sitting at, in the back here. So it's sitting behind the cube. And um, it shines its light onto a fluorescent cube that is discussed elsewhere in this course that I can easily take out. So we have here a cube. There's blue light shining in from the LED. There's a dichroic mirror sitting here in the middle that shines the light up through the light path. The fluorescence travels back, passes through the dichroic mirror and goes on this way to the camera. So that is the dichroic uh, mirror. 
So we're still missing quite a bit of parts that we have not inspected yet. And first of all, there's the uh, objective lens itself. So I'll try to uncover that now. So to do so, I'll first take this stage out of the way. So this is the motorized XY stage. And I will need to position it such that I can unscrew it. Okay, so I'll start now with taking out the stage inset. So this is where you normally put your slide in. And I'll take the first take the objective off. So the plan is to take the stage off, but I really don't want to risk hitting that objective. So maybe a little hard to see, but uh, the objective is simply screwed in here. And we can then see that this is a Nikon objective lens and we could put in any other Nikon lenses or actually any other lens with a compatible um, uh, thread. So I'll put that lens away in a safe place right now so that it doesn't get damaged by accident. Objective lenses are a very expensive part of the microscope and you want to be very careful with them. So we'll now take off the stage and that is connected with four screws. that out of the way here. So basically the, the light will go down here. Here is um, a mirror-like object. In, uh, th this is actually a prism. So that reflects all the light into this direction. You know, it really is, uh, it, it functions as a mirror. I'll shine my flashlight through it so that you can see that it is simply uh, a mirror. We then have that fluorescent uh, cube and here is a tube with the tube lens and we can actually also take that apart. Um, so let's first um, take the camera off here. So the camera again is connected to a ring that it will screw onto. There's always a connection somehow to the computer. In this case it's Firewire. Firewire is hot pluggable but nevertheless I like uh, switching this uh, thing off. So we take out the Firewire cable and now like most cameras you can then unscrew this from the microscope itself. Doing this too often is not great because you always get a little bit of um, metal scrapings that can then fall back onto the CCD. So this is what's called a C-mount, camera mount. And you can see the gigantic big uh, chip in here. And here on the back we had the firewire connector and the on-off switch and some other connectors we don't use here. Then the uh, actual tube with the tube lens is connected with, in this case, four set screws, but again, it is attached to a ring here. And I'll loosen all four of them. I'll need to put these set screws back in to be able to take the tube out. And so here we have the tube and when you look through that you will see a lens and this is the second most important lens in the microscope. This is the tube lens that takes the image in infinity and then focuses it on the um, CCD in this case. And what we then have left is the uh, dichroic cube 
and that the acrylic cube is hidden here behind so it can be easily replaced and fit exactly in the same position so it, um, the company made this construct here where the cube is connected to the lid here the excitation light will come in from this side the mirror will then send it here and the fluorescence comes back the other way and I'll demonstrate that in a second but first let's take off the uh, the hole the cube holder and the epi fluorescent light source okay so here we have the fluorescent light source in this case an LED and then the holder for the fluorescent cube so I'll now first light the LED by connecting the USB power source so we have the blue light coming out of the LED and now we can investigate what happens when we put this fluorescent cube back in so the cube to remind you has an excitation filter here there's the dichroic mirror here that we expect to reflect the blue light out and then green fluorescent will pass through and through this emission filter here. So when we now put the cube in, we see indeed that there is blue light. The blue light is now reflecting uh, this way. And um, if we could shine white light back through it from this side, you would be able to see that there's only green light coming back out in this direction. Now to demonstrate that emitted light, I just use my little uh, weak little flash lamp and I hold that behind here so that now acts as a uh, fluorescent uh, object and then you should be able to see that there's green light coming through that emission filter there. All right, so this is um, how this microscope works and I think you've seen all the different parts of it.